Welcome back. This is part two of the Eye Emergencies in the Wilderness lecture series. And in this lecture, we will talk about atraumatic eye conditions that could be found in the field. It is important to consider the differential diagnosis for atraumatic eye condition. Traditionally, we divide um, the condition in the red eye and white eye. And um, on the right, we have uh, the conditions uh, that lie under the category of the white eye, and that's your retinal detachment, central uh, retinal artery occlusion, central retinal vein occlusion, optic neuritis, temporal arteritis, and vitreous hemorrhage. The red eye is further subdivided in the, into painless and painful. Under the painless, we also consider the conditions that are relieved with topical anesthetic usage. So we've got subconjunctival hemorrhage, conjunctivitis, corneal ulcer, corneal erosion, HSV keratitis, UV keratitis, conjunctival foreign body, and episcleritis. All of these conditions are either painless or the pain resolves once you administer topical anesthetics. The other category under red eye is the painful eye or the eye pain that's not relieved with topical anesthetic and that's your iritis, acute angle closure glaucoma, and scleritis. So let's talk about some of these conditions in the upcoming slides. Let's start off with atraumatic red eye that is painless or relieved with topical anesthetic. So this is an easy one, uh, a simple non-dangerous condition, subconjunctival hemorrhage. Uh, it's the bleeding between the sclera and the conjunctiva. Oftentimes it can occur due to straining, coughing, or valsalva. And uh, usually the patient will have normal vision and it usually resolves days to weeks. Um, so really the treatment is reassurance. These people can continue their trip in the wilderness. Next one up is conjunctivitis. It's probably one of the more common causes of red eye in the wilderness. And uh, there are a few different causes for it. One is uh, allergic, second one is viral, and third one is bacterial. So um, a lot of times uh, people will have injected or red conjunctiva, some drainage, so usually it's clear tearing in the viral and allergic types of conjunctivitis, and you'll get purulent or yellow-white discharge with bacterial conjunctivitis, and pruritus is common uh, with the allergic conjunctivitis. Also, you can sometimes notice inflammation of palpebral conjunctiva on your exam, just shown in the middle picture. There should not be fluorescent uptake on your fluorescent staining, and this condition is usually self-limiting. However, because it is hard to tell what caused uh, the conjunctivitis in the wilderness, in general, antibiotic drops are recommended. Possible antihistamine drops if you have those, and hand washing becomes important because it is very easy to spread, especially viral conjunctivitis or the pink eye. In terms of the antibiotic options, erythromycin ointment is okay for most people. You should use quinolone preparations for contact lens wearers as uh, you need to have pseudomonas coverage. These people do not usually need to be evacuated. Corneal ulcer is a deep corneal injury, and uh, this is usually due to infection. It is associated with contact lens um, wearers, and uh, usually patients will complain of pain and white or gray infiltrate on the surface of their eye. Uh, there sh you should notice a fluorescent uptake, as uh, shown below. And the complications include corneal scarring and perforation. So uh, these patients should be treated with antibiotic drops. The contact lenses should be removed if possible. And they should be evacuated due to the uh, quite serious complications that can occur. HSV keratitis is another emergent condition that could be found in a wilderness setting. Usually the patients complain of severe pain, photophobia, and you can notice a rash in the ophthalmic branch uh, of trigeminal nerve distribution. Uh, usually these people have a history of HSV and this is a reactive reactivation of HSV infection. If uh, you perform fluorescent staining, you should find some dendritic lesions on the cornea as shown above. 
complications of corneal scarring and blindness. Um, the treatment is pain control, antiviral drops, or oral preparations if you have it, and evacuation. This is one of the most common uh, causes of infectious uh, corneal blindness. All right, UV keratitis or snow blindness. Um, this is sunburn to the cornea. It usually um, occurs 6 to 12 hours following exposure. People develop severe pain, redness, photophobia, and they just cannot function. If you perform fluorescein staining, you'll notice some punctate fluorescein uptake, as shown in the picture above. And this condition is self-limited, usually resolves within two days but it is very miserable and uh, it can really ruin someone's trip. And really the key with this condition is prevention. That's number one. So make sure if you're traveling on a glacier uh, that you are wearing glacier sunglasses and those are shown in the picture below. They have protective side shields. Um, so this prevents um, the sun rays to be reflected off the snow into your eyes. And you should wear those uh, even uh, in cloudy conditions. In terms of treatment, it's uh, anti-inflammatories, antibiotic drops, cycloplegics, and avoid any further sun exposure. And if you live in time of solar eclipse, as uh, the one we just had in uh, New York City in 2017, then please, do get those uh, Eclipse sunglasses as uh, the risks of looking directly at the solar eclipse with your bare eyes include retinal burn, macular degeneration, and permanent blindness. All right, let's move on to atraumatic red eye conditions that are painful and not relieved with topical anesthetics. You've got your atraumatic iritis, and that's an inflammation of the iris. Uh, this is also called, uh, called anterior uveitis, and um, you get deep eye pain not relieved with anesthetic drugs. Uh, you find redness, blurred vision, and myotic or constricted pupil in uh, these patients. You also might notice consensual photophobia, and that means when shining light in unaffected eye causes pain in affected eye. The complications uh, include increased intraocular pressure, pupillary scarring, and blindness. Uh, the treatment is steroids, and it could be drops or PO, cycloplegics, NSAIDs, and emergent evacuation. Um, iritis can also occur due to trauma, and uh, the symptoms and treatment are very similar. Acute angle closure glaucoma is another dangerous non-traumatic condition that can occur in the wilderness and basically uh, this is an elevation of intraocular pressure due to blockage of aqueous flow outflow and uh, usually the aqueous humor is made in the ciliary body and uh, it needs to travel out uh, through uh, the trabecular meshwork in the anterior chamber. If this uh, pathway is blocked, uh, you will have increased intraocular pressure. Uh, these people usually present with severe eye pain, headache, possibly nausea, vomiting, blurry vision, and halos. On exam, you will notice a mid-dilated pupil, injected conjunctiva, and hazy hernia cornea. The treatment for these patients uh, consists of administration of timolol drops. Uh, this is... Um, a beta-2 blocker, and it reduces aqueous humor production. Also, PO acetazolamide that you might already carry for altitude sickness. It's a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, and it blocks further aqueous humor production. Um, you should uh, keep this patient supine, administer prednisolone as well, and these patients will need emergent evacuation. Let's switch gears and talk about atraumatic white eye. Central retinal artery occlusion is basically an ischemic stroke of the eye. It is, um, could be associated uh, with temporal arteritis in older patients, and uh, many times you can elicit in history amaurosis fugaz, so transient vision loss within two hours uh, of the occlusion. 
your patient will complain of acute painless vision loss or partial vision loss. Uh, you'll notice severely decreased visual acuity and afferent pupillary defect. Uh, and by afferent pupillary defect, what I mean is when the light is shown in unaffected pupil, both will constrict. However, if it's shown in affected pupil, both will dilate. The treatment is oxygen. There is some evidence for hyperbaric chamber if it's available and emergent evacuation. Central retinal vein occlusion is blockage of venous outflow of the eye and uh, you get pro profound painless vision loss. Usually it's caused by thrombus, vasculopathy, external compression. Once again, you will notice afferent pupillary defect and decreased visual acuity. In the picture below, above, you'll see a plomoscopic uh, visualization of what we call thunder and lightning. Those are small uh, retinal hemorrhages. And you'll also notice optic disc edema. The treatment is prednisolone and emergent evacuation. Uh, these patients will usually need surgical management. Retinal detachment also causes painless vision loss or floaters. There's really no field treatment. However, it's easily diagnosed with an ultrasound. As you can see in the picture below, you uh, see a detached uh, retina uh, that looks like uh, a little wire swimming away from uh, the back wall of the eye and the treatment is really emergent evacuation. Uh, these patients will likely need surgical laser repair. Conditions that cause preocular inflammation can also be dangerous and it's important to recognize when to evacuate. So preceptal cellulitis uh, usually causes redness and inflammation around the eye um, and it doesn't affect the globe, it uh, happens anterior to the orbital septum. So these people will have normal extraocular movements and no injection of the globe. Um, this is usually treatment with augmentin and they probably will need to non-emergent evacuation as the complication of preceptal cellulitis is developing orbital cellulitis. Orbital cellulitis is a dangerous condition and needs emergent evacuation. This is when the infection is spread to posterior of the orbital septum, so the globe is involved. A lot of times you will see injection of the conjunctiva and uh, patients will report pain on extraocular movements. So this is also treated with augmentin initially and emergent evacuation. Dacrocystitis is... Um, an in infection of the lacrimal sac that typically arises from obstruction of the lacrimal duct. And uh, basically this is treated uh, with uh, augmentin as well and warm compresses. These people should undergo non-emergent evacuation. So a lot of conditions, eye conditions, need emergent evacuation. So anything with a, anyone with acute vision loss should be evacuated. Ruptured globe, obviously, HSV keratitis, uh, acute angle closure glaucoma, any kind of vascular occlusion to the eye, orbital cellulitis, retinal detachment, corneal ulcers, hyphema, retrobulbar hemorrhage, those should be all evacuated emergently. Conditions that could wait and by weight, I mean maybe if you have a donkey, you'll put that patient on a little donkey. It has complex lid lacerations, preceptal cellulitis, dacrocystitis. Let's switch gears and talk about uh, eye conditions at, at high altitude. When you're at high altitude, you experience hyperbaric hypoxia. Uh, your cornea normally gets oxygen uh, from the surrounding air. If there's um, less uh, oxygen in the air, it might develop ischemia, and this will cause uh, corneal edema and some blurred vision. This is rather unusual, but it is more common in patients who had corrective procedures done to their cornea, like LASIK, PRK, and especially RK. Retinal hemorrhage is another common conditions found, condition found at high altitude, and uh, basically this is microhemorrhages uh, at the retina. Normally, they are not dangerous. However, if patients start developing vision changes, they should be advised to descend. And uh, also remember that having intraocular bubbles that can occur 
post-ocular procedures uh, puts you at higher risk of developing eye pathology at high altitudes as the uh, bubbles will expand. So get medical clearance from your ophthalmologist be before you go to high altitude. In terms of eye conditions and diving, it generally it is safe even if you had uh, corrective procedures done to your cornea. However, once it, again, remember that intraocular gas bubbles will cause you problems when you dive, so make sure you're cleared by your ophthalmologist before you go and dive. A quick summary of the lecture. Number one, bring a medical eye kit. It is very useful when someone has an eye complaint. Remember your differential diagnosis, especially for the atraumatic eye conditions. And also prevention is key. So if you're going to be doing any glacial travel, you should make sure that everyone on your team has glacial glasses with sight protection. Also, if someone has any kind of eye conditions, they should be cleared by their ophthalmologist before going on the trip and have their own medications with them. And as you noted, many eye conditions will require evacuation. So please familiarize uh, the, with the indications. Here are my references for this talk.